part 10 in the series, The Year I Got Skinny. Let's call this episode, How on Earth Did She End Up Involved in the Weight Loss Industry When She Thinks It's Completely Stupid, okay? And it all hinges back, it all goes back to one person and his role in my life. I'm gonna tell you about that, but just in terms of the timeline of it all, I was down about 90 pounds in the last episode. That was January of 2018. At that point, I was supposed to, that was when I was gonna have bariatric surgery. I was gonna only lose 100 pounds with that. I was already down 90. I wasn't having the surgery and I was still in that, you know, kind of long wintertime grind of weight loss. You know, you're stuck in your house and all that. And I, I was months in at that point, had really good, strong momentum. That is why I kept going. But boy, I was looking forward to spring and spring was amazing, but something else was brewing at the same time. I'm gonna talk about spring in the next episode, but what was brewing that winter? Well, some big things changed. First of all, I started looking a whole lot different down 90 to 100 pounds in that season. And so I would go out into the world, you know, into the grocery store and need to spend two hours talking with people <laughs> about what I'd done because it was very noticeable. And who doesn't want to know, you know? And then there I was all excited about it and wanting to share this great news. And so spending a lot of time though. And so I actually started a YouTube channel, not to like grow a YouTube channel just to make my conversations more efficient. Like, oh yeah, I did a video on that and here it is. And so that really improved the efficiency of that communication. But also, oh, and I was doing some live videos into Facebook because I was I was doing them for another reason. I was out picking, you know, wild nettle and stuff like that out here. And so I have these videos of me with wild nettle. And that was in January and February of 2018. Well, it was then in March, I would say, when I was down the 100 pounds, I went into my doctor's office to see him. He hadn't seen me in since since I was down about 10 or 20 pounds. So he hadn't seen me for about 80 pounds. Now his staff had seen me. I had been going in for regular nurses appointments. And so they knew me, they knew all that. He knew what I kind of started with and you know, my launch, but he had not seen me. <laughs> Interesting, because I went into the office and I said, well, you know, Dr. James, you're probably not gonna even recognize me, but you know, I'm Dwayne Rose's daughter and I lost all this weight and you know, your people know about it or whatever. I was going in because my thought was, so he had a weight loss clinic and his weight loss method that he offered in the clinic was he had, he had like the, the B vitamin shots. He had, um, he had a, you know, an upper, okay. <laughs> and, um, recommended a meat, egg and cheese diet. And he was very overweight himself and he really struggled with obesity. He is the one, my primary care doctor who had referred me to bariatric surgery. And he said, you know, I don't usually refer people to bariatric surgery, but I'm gonna refer you. So he, he is that person. And we'd had some real heart to hearts about weight and the struggles. And he knew the struggles. It was really an interesting person to talk to about that. And so I went in imagining that he's gonna say like, whoa, I mean, look at her, whoa, I need to get all my patients to do this, right? Of course, of course that's what he would say. Cause look, I'd lost all this weight. I'd lost as much as I was gonna get with that bariatric surgery that he did not want to recommend me for and all that. And there I was in his office and I don't know, um, he's like, what is it that you, you've done again all these months? And so I tell him, well, you know, it's intermittent fasting, one meal a day and all this. Now he also knew about my long water fast. And I think that was kind of, in, you can learn about that on YouTube, but that was kind of clouding his judgment. But in fact, I only did that in the very, very beginning. And you know, they all knew about it. And so that made him real think, you know, she's an, a nutter, you know? <laughs> Okay, but the key thing was this one meal a day that I had landed on and that's what I was there evangelizing about and talking about like this one giant meal that I would eat every single day. I was, you know, so happy and happy, satisfied with the eating from this meal. I don't know what words I said because my words have changed in these years and they changed in those months. And the reason is whatever I said in that office, I do believe I overcomplicated it who knows what? Because I said to him, like, oh yeah, I've done this and this and this and this and who knows what, you know, stuff was flowing freely out of my mouth. And I said to him, you know, Dr. James, I bet you have a lot of patients who would do this. And I'm also thinking Dr. James should do it too, you know, but like, we're not talking about him, right? You know, that was my goal. But his patients, I said, 
you have so many patients who would do this. Maybe you should tell them about it. <laughs> because my thought is, take my case, and then he, he's got a weight loss clinic. He could really impact lives with this clinic, right? I mean, that was my thought. And he looked at me directly. I mean, he leaned forward and looked me directly in the eyes. And he said, Amanda, I don't have any patients who would do what you did. And I just thought, what? In my mind. And so I just, I thanked him. And I left the office, left his, you know, his office and went out into the hallway of his practice. And, you know, my first thought was, well, God, how stupid is that? Well, he just doesn't get it, <laughs> right? That's the first thought. And I'm standing in the hallway. I remember the lights and on me and all that. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. He's a smart guy. He knows a lot about weight loss. What is it that I'm not communicating here to Dr. James? What is it? It's something in my words, and I don't understand what it is. I don't get it. So I stood there and I thought, you know what? He is to lead this weight loss revolution. I felt like that was his destiny. <laughs> and because, I mean, I sure wasn't going to lead it. I mean, come on, how ridiculous is that? Totally ridiculous. I mean, I was out busy with my new life, right? And so I challenged myself. I said, you know what? Go out listen to your own words, think about it, work on this, come back in and repitch your doctor, repitch Dr. James to get all his patients to do it. And of course, my main goal was that he would do it. Guys, he was, he was probably 450 pounds. Um, I, I don't know. He, and such a tall man, and I'm so short that I can't even judge what somebody's weight is, but he was significantly overweight. And he had cardiac issues. And I thought, he can be the first person to try it, right? But he's saying, nobody's going to do this. And I know he also meant himself. And I thought, but it's so simple. Why wouldn't everyone try it? Why not? Well, how was I talking about it? What did I say that made him think it was complicated? Well, so I'd been doing those live videos on Facebook. I started to do more and I'd come out and I'd show my meal and say, hey guys, like this is what I'm eating. And people would engage with me and ask questions. And from that, I realized, for instance, that everyone's biggest concern was hunger. Well, that in fact had been my biggest concern too. I'd kind of forgotten about it. Was like, come on guys, no, it's not as bad as you think or whatever, all that. But I'm realizing the number one thing is hunger. Everyone's concerned about hunger. If everyone's concerned about hunger, then I need to work on the words that I'm using about hunger. And I need to anticipate that objection. And so that's what I was out doing in those um, live videos in the spring of 2018. So I was down about 100 pounds, and you'll see me in April and May, especially of that year, live videos, live videos. And that was the purpose, actually. I mean, I was helping people. Um, and that, I mean, that was a purpose too, but more like as a student of my words because of the doctor. Okay, so... <laughs> It's an interesting point because it would be fine tuning those words that would get us to the, really the birth of the Eat Like a Bear community. And so now this is the year that I got skinny, but that we're taking that this little sidetrack to just talk about the birth of the community of Eat Like a Bear. And it really did start or a key foundational point and fork in the road was when I walked out of that doctor's office and walked into the hallway under those bright lights and realized that I needed to change how I was speaking about it. If I was really gonna have an impact and get this doctor to start the weight loss clinic that was his destiny, right? Okay, so, and now it's about to be spring and the, the long grind through the winter is coming to an end and we will talk about springtime.